President Biden appears to be closing the gap with GOP presumptive nominee Donald Trump, according to a new poll NBC News released over the weekend. And what could be an encouraging sign for Biden, the poll reveals that in a head-to-head -head matchup, there's just two points now separating the two. Among registered voters, Trump leads 46% to 44%, and 10% remain undecided. According to the poll, Biden seems to benefit when third-party candidates, say Robert F. Kennedy Jr., are added. He leads Trump 39% to 37% if a third party is included. Conventional wisdom has been that RFK Jr. pulled supporters from Biden, but this poll actually shows 5% of Trump supporters and 7% of Biden's break for RFK Jr. when the field expands to include third party candidates. The survey also got a glimpse of the issues that voters most care about, and according to the results, voters care deeply about protecting democracy, 28% ranking it a top priority when casting their vote, while 23% of registered voters say inflation is top of mind compared to 22% who say immigration and border security are their number one concern. So this poll shows what it shows. Now, I, I should point out that most polls so far have shown the opposite result. Um, that that um, RFK Jr. hurts um, Biden more than Trump, but this is one showing that it hurts Trump more than Biden. It's pretty mixed so far. I think we like genuinely don't know from poll results what is more likely. It is clearly the case that RFK Jr. is pulling support from both people, and we'll have to see how this continues to shake out. It wouldn't surprise me if he ends up hurting Trump more overall because of him getting to Trump's right on some issues that the base feels betrayed on, having to do with COVID specifically. Um, that said, Team Biden has, is certainly acting in recent weeks. Like, like RFK Jr. is a major threat to Biden's reelection with the, you know, James Carville looking to dig dirt up on Nicole Shanahan, um, trying to shore up, uh, trying to recruit Ro Khanna to ask her to not be part of the ticket or whatever happened there. Um, getting, trotting out the Kennedy family mm -hmm. to remind Americans so much that Kennedys stand with Democrats, stand with Biden, damn it. So, uh, so it is interesting. I also predict that regardless of who wins the election, Biden or Trump, the other person will say that it's RFK Jr.'s fault. And we, you, will hear, you will hear stolen election, you will hear illegitimate election from either Trump or Biden, depending on who the loser is, and they will blame RFK Jr. Yeah, that's the scapegoating we regularly hear uh, attributed to third parties. There are people who maintain that every vote that goes to a left-leaning candidate, like, say, Jill Stein or Ralph Nader, uh, belonged to the Democrats, that they were owed those votes, even if the voter is not themselves a registered Democrat. Um, you had uh, you have v voters, more voters, and oftentimes in these kind of closed elections, staying home, or in the case in 2016, you had so many, what was it, uh, Wisconsin voters who voted all the way down the ticket, came out and voted, but let the top blink, uh, telegraphing their frustration with Hillary Clinton as a candidate specifically. But still, somehow, it's not Hillary's fault that those voters felt so strongly about her that they were willing to go through the trouble to vote, but didn't specifically want to vote for the chosen Democratic candidate who was historically unpopular. So again, we're, we're used to seeing this, but it's especially rich when you have a Democratic Party that's really putting all of its eggs in the we're saving democracy basket, going out of its way to not just try to rhetorically derail third party efforts, but to, to use legal mechanisms to bar third parties from the ballot. Uh, Jill Stein has been talking about this a lot, how what an enormous financial lift it is for her to get on the ballot, to pay people to collect signatures around the country. RFK Jr. has benefited from having billionaire backers, including the woman that he made his VP, that will help him in that huge financial lift. But do we want to live in a country where the only people who can even take a bite at a third-party apple are people who have basically put a billionaire on their ticket for, for the privilege of doing right. so? Right. You have to have um, pre-existing pre polling support to qualify for public funding. You have to have pre-existing polling support to qualify to be on the debate stage. The the system is so stacked against third party um, candidates, and then it's a winner take all system. So that even if you get if you get 10, 20, 30 percent of the vote somewhere, that's not re reflected in. Uh, you don't get a share of. I mean, there are a couple of states that are anomalous, but for the vast majority, that doesn't produce any share in Congress for you or your faction or your ideology. It does not win you any electoral votes unless you win the whole state by by 
by one, you know, by 50 plus a plus one plus a feather. Um, it's a, it's a, the system is entirely designed to have a confrontation between the two major parties. And yet we don't hear any rhetoric like, oh, you know, Libertarian Party people don't complain that, oh, Trump or Biden is stealing votes from us, right? It's always the major party saying, yeah. how dare these other people, you know, put one hesitant foot into the shallow end of the pool. Yeah, I think that's right. I want to ask you to what you might attribute the closing of the gap that seems to be happening. I wouldn't prematurely cheer for this, frankly, if I were in the Biden camp, he's still behind. And as um, I just heard the common, uh, commentariat over at Positive America point out, polls tend to advantage Democrats. So when the voting actually happens, they're behind what the polls would suggest. So even if the poll showed them tied, it would sort of be a losing outcome for yeah. Joe Biden. But to the extent that the gap does seem to be closing, um, Donald Trump's lead does seem to be diminishing. To what do you attribute that? And do you think that the um, kind of a, a more engaged trial status of yeah. the Stormy Daniels trial is having a negative effect on his public perception. Yeah, it is. You're right to point that out. It's important to realize that Trump overperformed his polling in both the last two elections. The polls had him losing both of the last two elections. Obviously, in 2016, he overperformed enough to win. Mm -hmm. And then last time, he, he lost. But he did do better. The polls had him losing um, somewhat more decisively than he actually did. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, I think. This race is always going to get closer. What we've seen in the last two presidential election cycles is that there is that the, um, you know, Hillary had a big lead in the polls, and then that got it got really close by the end. Something similar happened last time. You know, we are a very closely divided country on just a Republican Democrat basis, and then on a people have an have a ambivalence have a have a it's not they're not ambivalent about the policies of the state of the country obviously there are massive stakes in terms of how our economy is going to operate and what how we behave on the world stage but frankly they don't a lot of people don't like either of these two options and i can understand the voter going back and forth saying well i'm really dissatisfied with biden this was way worse than i expected when i said no to trump last time and i have a lot of fondness for uh, maybe, maybe the economic policies I associate with Trump, but also I can't stand him when I see him talking, but also Biden seems totally clueless. What am I supposed to do? So I understand people, if they're going back and forth, um, I, I think it was always going to get a lot closer. Um, and, you know, maybe, and Biden might benefit in some small way from having Trump back in the spotlight a little bit more, the, watching the trials, all that kind of thing. It fires up his Trump's base. Trump supporters are outraged by what they're doing to him. But people who are moderate on Trump don't like what's right, going a on. A significant percentage, again, it's not the majority, but this is not a vote. Who cares if it's the majority? A significant chunk of Republican voters say that a conviction in the Stormy Daniel case would dissuade them from voting for Trump. I think it was around 26%. If you lose 20%, yeah. I don't, you know, I'm not so if credulous as to believe it's, it's that high. Yeah. Right. But that, it could be 3%. That could be devastating for Donald Trump. So, you know, I don't think you can ignore those numbers, even if you think that they are largely overstated. Uh, I also just want to point out, I think that uh, we misspoke and said we were describing the percent of votes that for RFK from the RFK camp that would go to one or another. We said 5%. It's 15% of RFK junior people would break for Trump. 7% would break for Biden, right. which is how you get to a place where you realize right. that he negatively affects Donald Trump more than he negatively affects Joe Biden, at least for now. Yeah. Well, we will, we will see. Um, I think it'll be very interesting to watch what the polls do in the coming weeks and months. And uh, we're going to have a close election either way. Yeah. And we're going to have a sore loser either way. I will make that. <laughs> that will be my most confident prediction. We will I have will a sore not, loser I will not be betting against you. Blaming <laughs> third parties. More rising right after this.